Hello everyone, this is Velia from Guild of Jam on the Starport server Star Wars Old Republic. Right, so let me get into this podcast. Uh, this is going to be a guide for reducing and even eliminating lag in SWTOR flashpoints, any group content whatsoever, operations, war zones, ranked PvP, and Galactic Starfire. Now, I've got a few things ready on screen that I want to show you guys right now. So the first thing that you want to do, if you've ever been in SOTOR, you will understand that when anything moves on your screen, there's latency. Your little signal bar will drop, it'll go up and down, and when you've got a lot of enemies and a lot of NPCs targeting you at the same time, yeah, it can get very difficult. Numbers lagging all over the screen, damage numbers, I've came up with a fix for that, and I've spent a great deal of time struggling myself with these issues. And hopefully, through this podcast, which will be slow and methodical, so you're you're able to pause it as you're going through it, hopefully this will work for you the way it's worked for me. So the first thing you need to do is you need to open up your control panel and find your system display settings. Now, from... Star Wars The Old Republic 6.0. Swotor was actually changed. It was scaled from 59 hertz to 120 hertz, which means on TVs and certain monitors, you're gonna have to adjust a few diff- you know, a few of your settings. You have to adjust your color settings, you have to adjust your how your hertz output, you have to adjust even the kind of power adapter you're using. This can all affect your performance in Star Wars The Old Republic. Now these settings that I've got laid out right now, I'm on a 31 and a half inch monitor, curved uh, Alienware Series 8 X. I've decided to stick with the 920p by 1080, but I can go all the way up to obviously, you know, much higher resolutions. But for Star Wars as a public, this is important. You have to make sure your display resolution of your PC matches your display resolution in game, which we will cover. So once you've got your display resolution set 1920 by 1080p if you've got a multiple display make sure you do it on your multiple displays as well very important make sure they've got the same hertz output as each other advanced display settings now we're going to just going to cover a few things about this the refresh rate if optimally considered your monitor should be able now even if you've got the latest DirectX package installed, it should be capable of handling 120 hertz. TVs already go at 120 hertz. They that's what they are set to run by. You know, you'll see up here that we've got active signal mode. So that is, you know, if I wanted to watch TV from my monitor, it would display at 3440 by 1440 resolution. Desktop mode, when I'm connected to my PC, when I'm playing games, when I'm opening applications, when I'm work processing, when I'm doing PowerPoints, or even when I'm doing this video, it's always going to be the set resolution from the page before. Now you might think, that sounds simple. That's because it is. What they didn't tell you, when 6.0 came out in SWOTOR was everything was upscaled. We had got a brand new set of cut scenes were added to the game. Uh... Coffee came out, of course, Knights of the Fallen Empire, one of my favorite expansions, actually. Uh, and since then, all the other settings from the Windows Service Package doesn't work. They, they don't support SOTOR anymore, so you're basically running on 2011-scale DirectX. You're running on 11-year-old software. And that needs to be updated manually, which is why this podcast is a thing. I'm going to show you how to do it. Now little bit of background about me. I was a volunteer at the Windows Service Center for four and a half years. I did that in my spare time. But six, seven years ago, I left uh, to pursue indie games companies and stuff like that. So from your desktop, what you want to do is you're going to go to razorcortex.com. Now, this is a piece of software that, if I highlight it here, I'll put it up on screen for you. You want to go to this link on this website. You just want to download it. It works with 11, 10, 8, 7, and it even works with XP as well. So if you've got an older laptop that runs on XP, not sure about Vista. I don't think the compatibility is there for Vista at the moment, but 
from Windows 11 to 7, even works on mobile phones, tablets, it works on everything. What this software does, and it's totally secure, you'll be asked to make an account. You can do it through your Facebook account or any social media, or just use your old-fashioned email or phone number or something, you know, whatever's secure for you. What this software does is it eliminates all of the little background files, all the, all the trash flying around in invisible cyberspace on your PC. It closes all them down just from when you hit the play button on your video game. And as soon as you close your video game, it all comes back. It's great for speeding up competitive gameplay. I've used it myself in Forza Motorsport. I've used it with Gran Turismo. I've even used it streaming between platforms. Things like World of Warcraft. These games like SWOTOR, World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls Online, these games need a little bit extra now because graphics, the amount of memory they take up now on your PC, I mean, SWOTOR, the last count was what, 128 gigabytes, something like that. It's, it's a huge game. And when your PC has to scan through all those files, yeah, your PC's just like you. It, it gets tired. Your brain gets tired. This speeds that up. This is the coffee that your PC needs. It's a reputable company. They make mice, keyboards, you know, they're very reputable. This will work in any country in the world. It's even got a translate bot on the top right of your bar. If you want it in a different language, just click the button and it'll install. As soon as you've installed that, now this is kind of important. If we go to YouTube, I've actually got a video with a link that I'm going to show you guys. This is how you get the DirectX package that actually works with SWOTOR. So if we go to history and we then go to this one. This guy's actually got a link up for the original DirectX package. Now this goes back to 2012. The link I will put on the end of this podcast. What you want to do is you want to download this file from the link just in the middle here. You then want to make a folder on your desktop called DirectX. Put the file in there, open it, run it. Now when you get there, you're going to be a whole host of files from DirectX. Now don't panic. <laughs> There's a lot there. You will find one with a little blue badge that looks different from the rest. It's just the executable file. It's just the app. You run the app and it installs all these files into the one folder on your PC. That's all you need. Once you've got that, you're almost done. So after you've got the Windows Service Package, after you've got your Razor Cortex, boot up your Razor Cortex, and it will look something like this. I think the default is something, the default looks a bit like this, actually, when you first log into it. Now you can make an avatar, you can choose your platforms, Xbox, Origin, Steam, whatever. And all you do now, all you do is go to Systems Booster. You can scan, clean your PC. You can speed it up. You don't. I've not even done these yet. It does it automatically. All you do, doesn't matter where your games are installed on your PC. All you do is you click on SOTOR. You'll see I've already got the launcher open. So what we'll do is we're going to close that. We're going to open it again through Razor Cortex. And it'll generate an FPS chart as well after every use of the game. Now you'll see items restored. This is all these little things, turning on, turning off, getting your PC up to spec. Total playtime. I've tested this for about three hours. Yeah, just under three hours in the last, well, since last night. And it actually works very, very well. Now for people that have seen my other videos on Star Wars Republic over the years, you will realize that it lags. It lags a lot. If you look in the lower right of the screen, look at all the RAM and the things that's released. That's just background files. That's just background files that fly around your PC at any point in time. We run the game. We click play. And I'll show you. I'm on medium graphics at the moment. But I'll turn it up to ultra just to let you see how good this actually is. It is insane. And again, I'll run over the little parts and the preferences of the game that you need to adjust. You've got to remember your hertz have to be at 120. Your FPS, I recommend at 60. But here's preferences, graphics. 
Full screen, refresh rate 120, frame rate I recommend 60. This particular PC can go up to 200, but I don't like to push it. Resolution, very important, 920 by 1080. 1920 by 1080. Graphics quality, medium. And let's just have one other comparison. So right now, we are on our character select screen. Looks pretty nifty. We'll hit the ultra button. This is as high as it can go in game. And it is just as smooth. We will briefly go to Narshada. I'll just sign in to Vilya. And look at how quickly the world loads in as well. I've noticed my loading times have improved by up to 30%. Look at this for responsiveness. It is, there's no lag opening the map anymore. It's all, it's all, it's all fixed. The cutscenes, laggy cutscene choices, your spacebar doesn't seem to be working, like, just, we'll play it for a couple of minutes. What we'll do while we're here is we'll also load a PvP Warzone. Oh, and we get a pop straight away. So what we'll do is we'll just go into PvP and I'll show you the type of connection you can expect in PvP. I'm playing from nowhere near Virginia. I don't stay in the US. We're on a US server. My lag is supposed to be about 100 milliseconds. There we go. So my lag down there, I've got 164 milliseconds of lag, and yet, there is absolutely no lag at all. Running on Ultra. I've never had that before, ever. I've never had Sotar working without any lag. The quality of this video is really not going to do it justice because I'm not used to streaming in 1920 uh, by 1080p. But the, 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 the response times are there. It is absolutely awesome. If you want to boost, if you've got a, a high-tech monitor, if you've got a, quite a upmarket monitor, flick a button. If you've got an Alienware, you'll know about the, the different FPS settings you can get on it. Flick one of those and away you go. I can lower the brightness for an FPS boost performance boost and my PC is practically silent. It's not going it's not, you know, going nuts. So we're just going to show you a little bit of the combat here. It was very lucky getting a uh, <laughs> getting a pop as uh, quickly as we did. So we'll, uh, we'll show you what this looks like. Look at the ability bars, look at the movement in the background or thing, the amount of objects rendered on the screen. Uh, and you'll realize that it's a huge performance boost as compared to how I was last week It's enormous and that old service pack really Really, you know, I can't say enough good things about that. I've tried it on Battlefront 2 as well classic and it, it brings that right up uh, No compatibility with SWG or all wings just yet but if I can find a way to do that to improve FPS, oh god damn I'll be doing that because this is brilliant. Now look at, we're just going to go in, let's just pop a few abilities right now, switch targets. Pop a few different things right now. And this on Ultra. This is on Ultra. That is the unbelievable part about it, is that this is on Ultra. It's amazing, isn't it? How you can go from hardly being able to move to 60 FPS.
We're just going to go in for the kill here. And when I die, I will get rid of my uh, PvP screen. Yeah, we got the kill. There we go. It was a bit of a suicide, but it's worth it for the sake of the podcast. Just to show you, you can finish kills now in PvP. It can be done. Well, there we are. Let me just tab out of game, because I am going to be finishing that PvP match. Even when you tab in and out, uh, it takes a little bit longer to load, but when you spawn back in, still the same quality, just to show you tabbing in and out and stuff. And I've tried it on Facebook call as well, and everything works just the same. So that's it, guys. I will see you all get your results from that. Hopefully it works for you guys like it did for me. That's going to be the end of the podcast. Peace out.